So now that we have the equation for centripetal f acceleration and for centripetal force, we now need to think really carefully about how we use these equations. And it turns out that centripetal acceleration is a, it's a bit of a trick because in a sense, centripetal acceleration does not exist. Centripetal acceleration is simply relabeling a force that already exists. So let's write that statement and then we'll explain what that means. So centripetal force is simply a new label on a force that already exists. And so for this reason, we want to be careful when we make our free body diagrams that we never actually put the centripetal force in the diagram because the force already exists and it already has a name. It's just that force is producing this thing that we refer to as a centripetal acceleration. And whenever we say centripetal acceleration, we simply mean that we are changing the direction of the motion. Left, right, up, down. Somehow the direction is changing, but not necessarily the, the magnitude. So for this reason, free body diagram When we make our free body diagram, we will never label a force as centripetal. Not that there's not centripetal acceleration, but the force that causes the centripetal acceleration already has a name. So let's take a look at the two examples that we've already looked at. First of all, we looked at a mass being swung horizontally on a table. So if we imagine that mass as viewed from above, and the mass swinging around in a circular motion and the path will look something like this and of course we've already talked about the concept that the velocity vector always points tangent to that point let's label this a mass being swung horizontally by a string. It's important that we know what is connecting the mass to the center of the of the path. So now if we brought a free body diagram and we assume that this is a frictionless surface, that there's no friction to stop us from swinging the mass around, there is really only one force acting on the object. In the forward direction, nothing is changing the velocity, so we don't need to label any forces pointing forward or backwards. Now there is a force 
clearly pointing inward. We already know the centripetal force must point inward towards the center of the circle. This is the reason why, rather than traveling in a straight line at the same speed, this object will turn or curve its path as a result of the fact that there is a force pointing inward. What's the name of that force? Well, if we draw the free body diagram, there is simply one force. There is a contact force between the string and the center of the, rate of the rotation point. So that means that there is an inward force, and I do not label this inward force as centripetal. Instead, I label that force as T, the tension. The tension is the reason why the object follows the curved path instead of the path that Newton's first law says that it should follow, which is a straight line at the same speed. So in our second example, we looked at the car going around a curve. So let's draw in a curve. So here's our roadway. Here is the car going around the curve. And so again, we have a path, which is a curved path. At this instant in time, we have a velocity vector, which points tangent to the curve. Here's V. Now, take a moment before I explain what is causing the car, what force can be acting on the car to allow the car to change its direction rather than drive simply straight through the curve. There's clearly no tension. It's not gravity. Gravity is acting inward on the paper in this picture. What force is being exerted in the left direction to allow the car to turn towards the left? Well, let's draw the free body diagram out to the right. Turns out that the only force that would allow this to occur is the friction. It's actually the friction between the road and the tires that allows a car to make the turn. That should make sense because when a car is on a road that has very little friction, it's very difficult to turn because you need that friction. You need to be able to push against the road and then the road will push you in the opposite direction. So in this case, there is a force pointing inward and that force is the frictional force. So this is what it means when we say that a free body diagram should never have a force labeled as centripetal because the centripetal force is simply a way of relabeling or renaming some force that already existed in the situation, the tension or the friction. Now the friction and the tension are not the only two forces that can produce centripetal acceleration. There's a number of other forces that could also produce centripetal acceleration. Gravity, for example, for all of the objects orbiting around the Earth, Gravity provides that centripetal acceleration, that force that points in towards the center of the circle. The normal force can also produce an inward force that allows you to follow that circular motion. For right now, we'll leave just these two examples and I'll let you investigate some of the other examples that produce centripetal acceleration, but needless to say, you should never see in a free body diagram the word centripetal or FC. It exists. It is the cause of the turn, but I don't need to call it centripetal force because the centripetal force already has a pre-existing name.